traveler made his way along the road, a dark journey indeed, as this night, the solstice night, is the very longest night of the year and the very shortest day. It's a night to light fires, to restore hope, that in the earth's turning, light will return. It's the perfect night to gather together to ensure that the sun will come back to grow our food next year. So good job, everybody, for coming out tonight. We're going to be fed next year, and that's a good thing. Our traveler carried a large pack on his back, and as he walked, it made jingle jangly rattle sounds. <laughs> the road led him past fields and streams, farms and dreams, and finally to a quaint little town. It's a pretty town he thought to himself, with painted wooden houses and red brick houses, big trees and clean streets and barking dogs. He jingle jangled along. Times were hard. Mothers and fathers went to work every day and returned home at night tired and cranky. <laughs> Bad news blared out from the TV as kids held little lighted devices to their faces, thumbs twirling like moths around a porch light. Everyone felt hungry and tired. Jingle jangle, jingle jangle. He walked along. The traveler, too, was hungry and tired. But he knew something that no one else did. He knew that his dinner would be ready very soon. He knew that his dinner would be delicious. He knew because magic is real. And he had a magic stone, and he knew that he would be dining on delicious stone soup, but more about that in a minute. Jingle jangle, jingle jangle. The traveler jingled along down the sidewalk. Hello, said the traveler to a man and his child who were walking down the sidewalk too. There was no response and the two hurried away. Good evening, said the traveler to the woman getting out of her car, tipping his hat. But there was no response, and the woman looked quickly away and ran inside her house. Jingle jangle, jingle jangle. Greetings, said the traveler to the woman and children who were on their front porch. But there was no response. They turned to each other in surprise. The people here, it seems, are not particularly warm or hospitable to strangers. Perhaps they are just too hungry and tired, thought the traveler to himself. I know what to do, he said. Unfazed by the lukewarm reception, he turned into a little park and got busy. Off came his big pack from his back. Then he gathered sticks and limbs that had fallen from the numerous trees and arranged them just so smiling at the thought of what was to come. He took out a large iron pot, whistling a merry tune as he did so. He proceeded to light a fire and dance a little jig. He filled the pot with water from a sacred well nearby. And while waiting for the water to boil, he rubbed his hands together, got warm by the fire. With a great flourish! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he produced a soup ladle and tested the water. All well. 
by whistling and smiling. All this activity was attracting attention. Faces began to appear at windows and on porches. The townspeople began watching cautiously, curiously, skeptically. Finally, out came a young man who stood across the sidewalk watching the traveler who joyfully stirred the water in the pot. What are you cooking? He asked. Stone soup, came his cheerful reply. Stone soup? I never heard of such a thing. Soup from a stone? That's preposterous, said the young man. <laughs> Stick around and have some when it's all done, said the traveler. Then a couple came out and stood by the young man. What's he doing? They asked. He says he's making stone soup. Soup from a stone? That's preposterous, they said. A crowd was starting to gather around the traveler as word began to spread about the curious activity happening in the park. He continued to whistle away and warm himself. Finally, the water started to boil. The traveler, with great ceremony, produced the magic stone and held it in front of the gathering crowd. He carefully placed the stone into the boiling pot. Soup from a stone? Preposterous, somebody mumbled. The traveler took the ladle and took a sip of the soup. Tastes good, said the traveler. But it would taste even better if it had some blue potatoes. Blue potatoes? Anybody? <laughs> blue potatoes? You have blue potatoes? Would you be willing to <laughs> give blue potatoes so that this stone soup will be even better? Yes? Well, all right. Blue potatoes. Yes, yes. This is going to be the most delicious stone soup we've ever, ever had. But I think it would be better with a little onion. We have onion. You have onion that you would be willing to add to our stone soup? Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful onions. Yes. Oh, this is going to be delicious soup. <coughs> and you know what's missing? A little turnip. You brought turnips? You happen to have turnips? They're so beautiful. Who doesn't love a purple vegetable? I mean, I'm telling you, the turnips are beautiful. Indeed. So, just think of how amazing that is going to be inside of the soup. Oh, man, that's going to be good. I think it would be even better if there were leeks in the soup. Mm. Leeks? What? You have leeks? How wonderful. Surprise for that leeks. Oh my goodness, we've got leeks and more turnip to add to the soup. How fantastic! That's so great! And then this traveler looked around at the bounty on the table, and there was onion and rainbow carrots. Wow! Rainbow carrots? Oh, beautiful! Beautiful rainbow carrots and beets. 
Beautiful beets. What else? Did the bounty show up? Onion. We love onion. It's Johnny Mitchell's favorite vegetable. <laughs> Beautiful potato and onion. Oh, man. Look at all this. Beautiful vegetables. Awesome. So they handed the vegetables and he peeled and chopped them expertly and added them to the soup. Then he took another sip and declared it the best stone soup ever. Yes. Let me turn the page. One by one, the townspeople began to offer what they had. Onion, parsnip, carrots, and while the stone worked its magic in the boiling water, they began talking to each other, laughing, exchanging pleasantries, talking to each other. As the evening wore on, everyone agreed it was the most fun that they've had in a long time. And pretty soon, that soup was starting to smell really good. The traveler took another sip of the soup and declared it perfect. He ladled generous servings of it into bowls and handed them around. Soup from a stone, asked the traveler. Delicious, declared the townspeople, and they enjoyed the hot soup and each other's company. Everyone thanked the traveler for the marvelous stone soup. You must take all the credit for this delicious soup, he replied. All the ingredients that everyone contributed help make this delicious soup. He added that in life, as in the case of this soup, when everyone pitches in just a little something, a wondrous thing comes out of such an undertaking. The townsfolk from then on became kinder and more helpful to one another. They took turns reading books to little ones and older folks, sharing favorite stories. They brought beloved <coughs> books to fill the little free libraries that are all around the town. They went to their beautiful library as a family and enjoyed all the wonderful programming at the Bartow County Library. <laughs> and the traveler gently picked up the stone, replaced it in its carry bag, and went on his way warm and happy. <coughs> jingle, jingle. Jingle, jingle. <laughs>